Hello everyone. In this tutorial series, I am going to discuss about kernel tree. So basically, if you follow along this two-part series, we are going to understand everything that is to know about kernel tree. So without further ado, let's dive in. So first of all, why do we need kernel tree? That's the first question, and a very valid question. So kernel tree is mainly used to take samples to a higher dimension. So if you have a sample, say your sample has three dimensions, that means in your data set, the sample has like three features, then if you want to transform that sample to a higher dimension, say five dimension, 10 dimension, or maybe even infinite dimension theoretically, then you can use kernel tree to do that. Now, after this slide, I will actually show you why transforming a sample to a higher dimension can be critical and can be important. Next point that I want to mention is, kernel trick doesn't actually take the sample to a higher dimension. I mean, it, it implicitly does it. Basically, you don't actually have to transform the samples to a higher dimension using kernel trick. But the problem is, this is not actually the problem, this is the advantage, I would say. Your machine learning algorithm will actually think that the samples have indeed been transformed into higher dimension and they will behave accordingly. So basically your, your samples haven't, have not been transformed into a higher dimension, but your algorithm will think that they have been transformed to a higher dimension. And finally, this is why it is called a kernel trick because it's tricking the model in a way. And it's called kernel trick because kernel, it is related to deriving similarity measures between two samples in the form of dot product. So when we're going to discuss the technical aspects of kernel trick, I'm going to show you why I'm talking about dot product here. So the real question is why do we want to transform to higher dimensions? So first of all, let's look at this particular uh, scenario. You can see nine points right here, and they are all one dimensional, right? Because there is only the feature X and nothing else. You cannot really separate this point out using a point, right? If you draw a point here, you cannot separate these two classes. If you draw another point here, you cannot separate these two classes, green and red. Even if you draw a point right here, you cannot separate out these two classes. So, that means these classes are not linearly separable. Because in case of the 1D feature space, you cannot really discriminate between these classes using a point, which has zero dimension. Now, why don't we take these points to a higher dimension, a 2D space? Now, how we are going to exactly take the point to 2D space is something I'm going to discuss later on. But there is some function which will allow us to do it. Now this function can be, this transformation or function can be like x comma x square or maybe x comma uh, 2x or x comma 0.5x, many things. It can be anything that you want it to be. After transforming, this scenario can happen. So in this case, you can see in 2D space, the green points and the red points are actually linearly separable. It can be separated using a simple line in 2D space, right? Let me actually give you another example here. So look at these points. These are all two dimensional points and you cannot really separate them out using a line because a circle is needed to separate them out. But if you now make a transformation of all these points and take them to 3D, this is 3D, right? Because there is X, Y, and Z, three axes. Then maybe it will be separable by a hyperplane. Now, I think you guys, have already become a bit confused because we are thinking that I'm talking about linear separability, separating using a line. But in the first example, I talked about separating using a point. In the second example, I talked about separating using a line. In the third example, I talked about separating using a 2D hyperplane. Then what am I talking about? So linear, linear separability doesn't really mean separating by a line. What linear separability means is that if your points are n-dimensional, then they should be able to be separated using a n minus one dimensional hyperplane. That means for 1D points, they should be separated by zero dimensional point. For 2D uh, points, they should be separated by a 
one dimensional line. For 3D points, they should be separated by a two dimensional hyperplane. That is what linear separability is. So what I'm trying to say is when you take points to a higher dimension, there is a higher chance of making them linearly separable through a n minus one dimensional hyperplane. So now what is the application of Carnell trick? Let's first understand that because we need to be motivated, right? In order to understand this. First of all, support vector machine. It is the classic example. If you are using SVM, which is used very widely, especially if you're working with biology data, clinical data, bioinformatics data, SVM is a must because SVM can work with very small number of data points. So if you're trying to separate out non-linearly separable classes, SVM, Carnell trick is for you. And in the previous slide, the examples that I was showing you are actually examples of SVM. So next, we can also use this for clustering, which is an example of unsupervised learning, right? We, we can form uh, unsupervised clusters. So normally, if we apply k-means clustering, the distance will be calculated in the actual dimension, right? The actual feature space. But if you are using Carnell trick, then those distances will be calculated in a higher dimension, which is much different looking than the actual lower dimension. Let me show an example of how this works. So you can see that this is the original data points. If you use normal k-means right here, then the separation is not that good, right? I mean, this is, I am pretty sure that you are not expecting this, but this is what will happen because in the current 2D space, the central red points are actually closer to the borderline red points compared to the borderline blue points, right? So, that, so this is what will happen. But if you use kernel k-means, the, the notion of distance is not different. And so these beautiful looking clusters will be formed. One final example I want to give you is kernel PCA. So kernel PCA is actually a non-linear version of PCA or the famous principal component analysis. So you all know the principal component analysis is used to project higher dimensional data to lower dimension, right? Now, PCA is a linear linear projection, but you can actually use kernel PCA to do non-linear projection so that when you project your data points, they will actually be linearly separable. So basically, let me give an example again. In this original feature space, in this original 2D plane, you cannot actually separate these two classes out with a 1D line, right? So they are non-linearly separable. If you perform a normal PCA, a very normal vanilla PCA, which is linear, this will be your PC, PCA. So the first plot has both PC1 and PC2, and you can see that it's very similar to the original and they are not linear, really linearly separable. And also if you only look at the PC1 projection, again, it is not linearly separable. But now let's try to look at what happens when we apply uh, kernel PCA. In kernel PCA, PC1 and PC2 are linearly separable. And also if you just look at the position of PC1, it is also linearly separable. So that is it for this tutorial, for the first part of the tutorial. In the second part, we are going to learn the techniques of the kernel trick. We are going to talk about polynomial kernel 2D and 3D. We are going to talk about RBF kernel. And I think that after the next tutorial, you will have no confusion whatsoever as to how to apply kernel trick and how it is actually useful. So thank you, everyone. Let's meet in the next tutorial. And the next tutorial is actually given the link is given in the description. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to subscribe to the video. Thanks very much.